Hi. The broadcast is live. Yeah. You might have to go in and make it public. I'm going, that's what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to find. Oh. <laughs> we can hear you. I can hear you talking on there. Um, edit privacy. How can I just make this thing stay public? I don't know. Okay, it's public. <clears throat> Okay, we are back live. Add to the screen. Okay. Share it on your pages so they can see it, so they'll know to come back. Okay, yeah, I did. Yeah, share on your page, Judge Long. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, he did. I'll bring my other phone right quick here. Okay. That ten Angelo hair. And one Angelo hair. Thanks. Okay, we have hey, 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 let's see who was watching. I got somebody, some people watching. I don't know. I can't see them. We got Latoya back on with us. As I can't see who else is on. I can't, I'm trying to see who. I see her. I see Latoya. I'm trying to see. I couldn't see. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, we back on. I know I'm on there. Oh okay, I didn't see you. Okay, bye. I'm okay, I can show you. I'm share. Right okay, share, share. Okay, share. Okay, I bye bye. I just share. Okay. <clears throat> oh, we got Dorothy this time. Okay, we got. Okay, we all now. I see. Um. I see some more people back on. Thank you for coming back. I'm so glad that you're back with us. Listen, this has been exciting. It has been exciting. I do want to play a commercial. I wasn't able to play well before. I lost myself. I couldn't. I'm going to play this one right here. Here we go. Hopefully it'll play. Okay, it says it's having trouble or something. Let's see. Jody said, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going, I'm coming. Open. It's exciting. Here we go. Three, two, one. Here we go.
Yes, that is my um, Pure Beauty Essence LLC. Um, get your products. Please get your products. And then I want to play um, one more commercial. Which one? Because I, I think I'm controlling this. I, I, I pulled them up. Maya? Yeah. I'm adding your um oh yeah. I can pause the one. There you go. Okay. Toxic relationship. Amen. <clears throat> you want to do Lost in the Church? You got it up? Yes, I do. Uh, awesome, awesome writing. <laughs> my book lost in the church um you can also get that book on amazon it has um a couple of nuggets in it talks about how i am was i am a pk kid raised and born in the i was raised in the church but still lost just lost in the church and you can get this book on amazon um as well, lost in the church. What happened to her? Uh -oh. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you now. Okay. That's how I became free to shine because I, um, I wrote that book. And when I wrote that book, I was God, I, God freed me. And when he freed me, I was free to shine. So let's get back to this uh, toxic relationship. Is it love or are you just thirsty? <laughs> listen. <laughs> <laughs> this, tip, this book, listen. I'm going to tell you. I read it again. Like I said, I read it a couple times. And I it, it, it took me someplace. Now here in chapter... Um, and chapter, we went over chapter three. Now we get on. Gotta go on to chapter five. Gotta get to maintaining. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> gotta get to maintaining um, your freedom. Mm -hmm. Gotta get to maintaining your freedom. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you? maintain your freedom how do you maintain your freedom um when you read that um part um minister high tower mm -hmm. what 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 um <laughs> i'm gonna let you tell us what you got and then I'm, i want minister angelo to come and tell us a little bit about what he got mm -hmm. well I, I a position of freedom Mm -hmm. Well, the what I got from this chapter is 
uh basically doing it god's way just like i said before when about the the um the wall of resentment a lot right. of the times when we were doing a lot of these things that we think is uh causing us to be free is we're doing it our way you know we're, right. we're putting and it goes back and the, the the book has this theme this reoccurring theme of trying to put junk in that spot that only is reserved for god so right. if we you know in each chapter you find yourself uh noticing when you have done that so the last chapter talks about well let's do what we have we have to do so in my case the forgiveness thing was uh uh my my way of getting revenge to people who were doing things to me or did things to me which is not god's way and here i am putting stuff in that spot where god has already given me clear instructions of what to do but i do it my way so when I do it my way, you know, I get trash results. So one of the one of the key factors in this last chapter is no matter how much it hurts, no matter how much you don't want to do it. And I heard I think it was you, you apostle said, I'm just doing this because you 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 said it, God. I don't really agree with this. This hurts my feelings to do. The only reason I'm doing this is because this is what you want. You know, I know that you know way more than me and I know that you have the best for me. So I'm just doing it because of that. I don't understand. So that's where a lot of me, because I'm not perfect. A lot of me is still right there. I'm only giving you this because you asked for it and, and my way ain't working. Right. So that's where I got, that's what I got out of this last chapter. Absolutely replacing all your junk with God's word. And well, absolutely. Yes. You know, yeah. um, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom mm -hmm. and yes. a lot of people took that as meaning being scared of him no it, it, it the fear is reverence mm -hmm. I, I i i reverence i respect his way being right i mm -hmm. agree that his way is right whether i feel like doing it or not mm -hmm. and right. and so right. when i respect his word as the highest authority and and I, that means that I'm willing respect. If I ain't willing to, to follow, then I ain't really respecting. Mm -hmm. And so the respect for who God is, identifying and recognizing, you know, we talked about at the beginning of the show that the origin, you know, God being our origin, our beginning, we were with him before we were a human being, mm -hmm. an embryo in our mother's womb. And so... So then that means he know everything about me. Mm -hmm. He knew mm -hmm. all the, 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 the moves I was going to make mm -hmm. before he oh, yeah. informed me. And so when we go back to that, looking at, okay, he has untied me to ride me, mm -hmm. right? Like he did that donkey, yeah. you know, when mm -hmm. he sent the disciples, he, listen, he sent the disciples to a town ahead. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That means he already knew the donkey was tied up in the right. next town. He mm -hmm. hadn't been there physically, but mm -hmm. he knew what was going on. He knows what's going on with you and me. Right. He knows what we tied up to. So when 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 is when the appointed time comes, when the appointed time comes, then he sends forth maybe a, a, a sister, a brother in the Lord, somebody to speak some truth into your life, a book. A mm -hmm. book, you know, to, mm -hmm. to, to yeah. untie you because he has the master has need of you. And that's what he told the disciples. When you go and get that donkey for me to ride, when that the, when he said the owner's going to ask you what you're doing, you tell him the master has need mm -hmm. of him. Yeah. Right. The master yeah. has need of us. And so he's untying us from the bondages of resentments from from the the bondages of toxicity people mm -hmm. pleasing come on elder michelle mm -hmm. people pleasing and 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 needing to be needed he's untying us to yes. run us. the master has need of us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i love that part because as you said he has untied us from some things you said people please and that was one of the biggest things that he had to untie me from mm -hmm. i had to get a, i had to get broke from that because you know that was one of the biggest things that i would do was one i was i was a, a people pleaser 
Mm. I wanted everybody in my circle, everybody around me, everybody I knew. I wanted them to be happy. I wanted them to be pleased. And I and it didn't matter what it cost me. Mm. It didn't matter what it cost me. It didn't mm-hmm. matter if it cost me my happiness or me being free or if I'm going to be bound, they happy though. Mm-hmm. And I'm I'm pretending like I'm happy because they happy because I done made them happy. No, I'm over here miserable. <laughs> but because I was a people pleaser, <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to make them happy. And right. I'm so grateful. Um, come on, Minister Angelo. What did you get from this chapter five maintaining um a position of freedom? Wow. Um Actually, I just had a sit down conversation with God myself. Um, and he had me think about the game of uh, basketball. And uh, and um, I have to say is in, in, in this type of journey, God sent me, you know, in the game of basketball, you 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 have you have your starter, then you have your bench players. Right. And. um in this particular season, you know, he was the veteran player leading me, but I could not follow. So what God had to do to me to maintain my freedom, he had to sit me on the bench for that season. Because since I didn't follow pursuit, what he was doing on the court, so we can't make it to the final to win our championship, I was bench. And, and when I was bench. And that next season in my life, when he took me off the bench, he said, now, he said, now you learn. He said, now I can, he said, now you can move forward. And that's what happened a lot of time in my life. I thought I was going for doing everything what God asked me to do, but I wasn't. And since I could not follow what he was doing, I had to be set down for a season. I had to be bent. So for, for me to maintain my freedom, and stay free, I have to be sitting for a season just to get it right and to learn from my mistakes. Mm. Because if I don't learn from my mistake, I will end up doing the same thing. It's just like the dog going back to his own vomit. Mm. Because he is used to that environment. And so yeah. if, you, if you're not seated in a season, you're going to go right back to that same stuck environment. You're going to go back to that same um, a toxic relationship. You're going to go back to that same vomit that you spit up and that you got sick of. You said, I don't want to do this no more. But, but that's where you're going to be at. And that's where the product of son was until he had to get himself together. And that's how I got myself together. I got tired of eating slop and junk food. Mm-hmm. And so when I got tired of being sick and tired, I got myself together. And I went back to my daddy and he welcomed me back in open arms and with love. Mm-hmm. I was mm-hmm. lost, but now I'm found. And so that's, that's how I maintain my freedom in this season. Mm-hmm. Amen. That's good. You know, on page 93, Apostle, of uh, maintaining your um, freedom, right here yeah. it says that the devil's goal, it says, don't be ignorant. The title of this page right here was, don't be ignorant of the devil's devices. You know, and it goes on to say the devil's goal is to get us is to get us to disagree with what God, with God and agree with him. Getting us into disobedience. It is our, our disobedience that we that us and to take us captive at his will. For the word of God says that when the devil tempted Jesus, he left him only for a season. We forget he only going to leave us for a season. <laughs> Mention that in this book. I just want to tap on that just a little bit because what are some of the commonly used devices that he might try to use? You know, um, first of all, you know, put a pin right there. It is, it is his goal. The enemy his got goal. a plan. He got a plan. 
Yeah. God, you know, the Bible says that God knows the plans he has for us and they are good and not evil to bring us to an expected end. Mm -hmm. Well, the enemy got a plan too. He got a goal. And his goal is to get us to disagree with God and agree with him. You can't just resist the devil without agreeing with God. Mm -hmm. And and so when, when we look at uh, the beginning of chapter five, maintaining a position of freedom, the the scripture, Galatians 5 and 1 says, be not entangled again in the same yoke of bondage wherewith yeah. Christ has set you free. Mm -hmm. You've been set free. He untied you to ride you. Now, what would that donkey look like going back to that post he was tied to <laughs> and trying to get tied up again? Mm -hmm. You know, and so the same principles that we practice to obtain freedom must be used to maintain that freedom. And so you'd have to look through um, chapter 4 and the earlier chapters to look at those principles of honesty, being mm -hmm. honest, being uh, um, humble, mm -hmm. being open-minded. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going to have to put self-will yes. aside and operate in 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 God's will in spite of what self-will is, is screaming to you. Mm -hmm. um, in chapter five, I, I talk about forgiveness. That's a mm -hmm. principle, y'all. Yeah. That's the principle Absolutely. that I you. Aaron, you talked about that, mm -hmm. you know um forgiveness uh open-mindedness so that when the enemy comes and steps back to you you are not stuck on what they say stuck on stupid yeah. you're not just stuck <laughs> on oh they want me i just gotta yeah. no you're not stuck on that and so right. some of, some some of the um what you talked about some of the commonly used devices of the devil I talk about on page 94. The first thing is conversation. Yes. And, um, right. Harry, you said when you saw the ex, y'all didn't y'all wasn't hugging, mm -mm. you know, and carrying on conversation. Right. You just, you know, it's like walk on by. Do, 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 do. Yes, <laughs> man. Right. You know, and and, and so yeah. that conversation, see, you need to take old boy and old girl off a of speed dial. Yeah. Yes. yes, you need to that remove part. them from your phone. You need to block that number block because <laughs> when the enemy steps back to you, he, you look at that number yes. and and you psych yourself out. You in denial and you say you don't say it. I ain't taking no more of them calls. But when the number comes up, you tell okay. yourself, hmm, "Let me answer this call and give this brother here this is a piece of my mind." <laughs> and then let me see what say, they got to say. You, you, you yeah. say, "Hey." Hey, <laughs> and you caught up in the conversation. Yeah. And, and so God. that's the that's the first device that the enemy uses. And, it, and we see proof of that in Genesis 3, mm -hmm. um, where we see that the enemy um, in, came to Eve with that communication device yes. um, to get her to, com to have a conversation. He said, did God really say? Yeah, you know, did God did really, God really tell you that he you should really stay away from so and so, yeah. or or did he say just deal with them differently? Did he tell you to really <laughs> sit down for a season, mm -hmm. or, or did he tell you to sit down forever co concerning that individual? But the enemy wants to have a conversation, and then the next thing is distraction. Mm -hmm. uh, on page ninety five, we talk about distraction. You may receive yeah. a phone call or a visit. Mm -hmm. Your ears and eyes are gateways to your soul. Protect yeah. your soul. I remember this one incident, and God will talk to you. He'll warn you. This one incident. Now I'm telling you, I've been I've been with the Lord now for over 32 years, but I'm talking about the first year out the gate, mm -hmm. out the world, right? Mm -hmm. In a relationship, in a toxic relationship. I couldn't be in nothing but a toxic relationship because I was toxic. Anytime <laughs> you toxic and you in a relationship, the relationship is toxic. Right. And I remember the Lord untied me and I got out and I began to seek the Lord and seek the Lord. I was eating the word like a like a starving person. I was so thirsty. I had been seeing these hallucinations and mirages for so long. And and, and the Lord began to feed me that living water and I was drinking, I was eating and I was drinking that living water and I was beginning to get my, that obscured vision was beginning to be corrected and I was able to see things. And the Lord spoke to me one day and he said, and when he comes back, don't kiss him. Mm. I said, well, wow. he ain't coming back. He done married somebody else, you know. I'm feeling rejected because 
well, why you didn't marry me? I was already married to somebody else. But that's a whole nother story, right? Mm -hmm. See, oh my God. In these uh, de delusional thinking. Yes. And so I thought, you know, when the Lord said, and when he comes back, don't kiss him. And I thought, well, he ain't coming back. And one day I was sitting in my living room, in my dining room, and the front door was, was open and the screen door wasn't locked because the kids were outside playing. And did he not come back, walked in my house, walked straight up to me and said, give me a kiss. I was wow. like, oh, 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 oh. Because I knew right then, see, I hadn't been out. I hadn't been free long enough. And I don't know if long enough would have ever existed mm -hmm. that that kiss wouldn't have took me somewhere I wasn't supposed to go and keep me yeah. longer than I was supposed to stay. Yeah. And, and, and so yeah. God had warned me, people of God, God will talk to you and God will tell you, he will give you those directions. The question is, will you follow him? Yeah. And then the next, now this one, uh, Elder Michelle, you want to say something before I go to frustration? Oh yeah, because the one you just talked about was um, that, that conversation and um the distraction yeah mm -hmm. that distraction you know um he coming in and he trying to tell you you know i'm gonna help you you know he he ain't been one to go with you to church now all of a sudden i'm gonna come and go to church with yeah you. right been oh, there. buddy you ain't <laughs> yeah. been going that's just a whole distraction to yes. keep you from moving in the things it says you you mentioned on 95 you use ezra chapter four y'all have to get this book listen when i tell you that this book will bless you i promise i promise yeah it will a, bless your soul I agree this book you. when she talked about that part with zerubbabel <laughs> and building the people came to him and said listen we know your god we want we want we want to be a part too. Can we help you build? They didn't really want to help him build. Right. And, and now I'm gonna show she get ready to show you why. Come on, talk about that frustration part. Frustration. Uh, As so in the book of Ezra, chapter four, when the enemy approaches Zerubbabel and the heads of the families, they start out with this conversation and, and try to distract them and, and find a way in. The Bible says in Genesis um chapter four that sin crouches at the door waiting yes. for a way in and so the enemy is looking for a way to get in the enemy is looking for a way to get in and then and so then now <laughs> then they go on and they say in ezra four the people around them listen to this the people around them set out to discourage the people of judah and make them afraid to go on building and how did they do it listen to how they did it they hired counselors That's to right. work against them and frustrate their plans. Yeah. Listen, can you believe that the enemy actually hires? He's got people he can hire, people that are for hire by the enemy to frustrate the plans, your plans as you seek to grow and rebuild the temple. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost? Come on. And, and, and so you, you're trying to rebuild your life. You're trying to build it in God this time. With God as the foundation, the enemy has, has his goal. Remember, his goal is to get you to disagree with God mm -hmm. and agree with him. And right. so he's hired counselors. Listen, who are those that are hired as counselors to frustrate your plans My anybody God. that's available when we are not submitted and i'm reading this from page 96 mm -hmm. when we are not yeah. submitted to god we are unable to resist the devil that's james 4 and 7 and this makes us available to the enemy for his use don't don't not only do you not want to allow uh um the enemy to frustrate your plans. You don't want to be a part of the frustrating, frustrating of the plans of others. Letting right. the devil use you because you saying, "Girl, you better go on and marry that man. You better go. <laughs> that he a good kid." Mm -hmm. And 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 God is telling her, "Baby, yeah, let right. me show you what's really going on." Yeah. <laughs> you know, but y'all look so good together. Uh, how many of y'all have heard that? Y'all look so good together. Yes. So, you know, but God is trying to get your attention and tell you to say my will for you. This said, don't, mm -hmm. don't do it. There is no temptation taking you, but such as is common, common to man. man. And God will with every temptation 
provide a way, a way of, of escape. escape. Yep. Listen, you said Ooh. when you read that, I was when I read this, I was like, oh my God, because it says this makes us available for the enemy. And when you make a decision to change your lifestyle, this what got me mm-hmm. was this part. It says, when you make a decision to change your lifestyle for God's glory and you begin to rebuild the temple, your adversary, the devil, will use who and whatever he can to hinder the work. Listen, he ain't going to hold you up. He's not trying to. He going to do whatever whoever use whoever whenever he can to stop you from doing whatever it, how many times have you made up your mind and said you know what i'm getting ready to um i'm gonna start praying more i'm gonna start fasting a little bit more i'm gonna start reading my bible more mm-hmm. and as soon as you start doing it you're doing good for about a week or two weeks mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you ain't doing it no more like that because mm-hmm. you didn't got a phone call <laughs> That, the, that distraction, first of all, you got the phone call, the conversation came. Mm-hmm. Then after the conversation, the distraction came because I'm finna, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna help you read more. You don't even know the Bible. You don't even like it. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? You go mm-hmm. help me. I'm gonna help you pray more. Mm-hmm. Now we, I'm not praying no more. Mm-hmm. I ain't reading. I'm not reading no more. I at least started back. Right. And now I'm not doing it. Why? Because I have allowed him to come in to frustrate me mm-hmm. and to get me off of what God has told me to do. He done changed my mind. He done, he done changed, made me change my identity to make me believe that I'm something that I'm not. Mm-hmm. You said that in, 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 in one of the other chapters. I think it was chapter three. And then the next one is discouragement. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ezra 4 and 13, the enemy, listen, the enemy in Ezra 4 and 13, the enemy wrote a letter to the king indicating that if the people of God were allowed to continue restoring the walls and repairing the foundation, that's what we do when we rebuild in the temple, when we're working on our lives, when we give our lives to the Lord, we are, we are. Uh, um, rebuilding the temple. We're repairing the walls. We're restoring. We're repairing the foundation. He says, if this is what the letter to the king was, if you allow the people of God to continue restoring the walls and repairing the foundation, no more revenues, taxes, or duty will be paid and the royal revenues will suffer. Don't you know the enemy knows that when you surrender full, your full life to God, that what you contributed to the kingdom of darkness will no longer be available to the kingdom of darkness and, and the, the, the kingdom of darkness will have a loss mm-hmm. because you ain't operating in it no more? Yeah. No, no, yep. that part. That's good. That's and then, you know, sometimes we don't realize how vitally important we are to the kingdom of mm-hmm. God, let alone the kingdom of darkness. We were good yeah. soldiers. Mm-hmm. in the kingdom of darkness <laughs> yeah. and when we leave we are missed and so yeah. the enemy sends out his henchmen to come and bring you back mm-hmm. to prevent this the enemy suggested to the king he said if you don't believe me check the archives mm-hmm. check you see who they really are yeah. go back and look at that and he begins to to uh, um, present to you, rehearse to you, get you to rehearse all the things from your past that you did. So you will disqualify yourself from being uh, a welcome in the kingdom of God Mm -hmm. and you'll retreat back to them old ways Mm -hmm. of the kingdom of darkness. Mm -hmm. That part. And that's what he wants. (laughs) Yes. He wants, because he wants you to go back. He don't want you to be successful. You know, and I'm glad you brought that part up because I was reading and um, now she said this part in, in, in Ezra, right? But I was reading in Revelations 12 when when the devil got kicked out of heaven, he was mad. He came to earth like with a vengeance. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I'm mm-hmm. kicked out of heaven. I, I'm not there no more. And you get ready to let these boogaboos up here in heaven? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. He mean he coming down on us. He said he came down to earth with both feet. He mad. He's angry, upset. He ain't trying to let none of us make it in to kingdom to take his place. 
Mm. He don't want us to take his place. So what he's what he does is he's doing everything that he can to keep us from doing what it is and completing the assignment that God has placed on our lives by a, by frustrating the plan, by sending discouragement, by allowing us to stay in relationships that we know good and well we shouldn't even be in. You mm-hmm. know you should leave. You know you shouldn't be there. Should have yeah. been gone. Been yeah. here too long already. Aspiration date been passed. It's, it's yeah. Been <laughs> you know, it's like having that like, old food in the refrigerator that has sat there for so long now it's molded. Yeah. And you're trying to figure out what's this smell in this refrigerator. Well, yeah. if you're just going to take the top off, you can look at you and see, oh, it's this. Mm-hmm. Let me get rid of this. And when you get rid of that, guess what? The smell goes away. Mm-hmm. You know, so it, we have to remember that the adversary's job, he's doing his job. Mm-hmm. That's all. But we have to remember what job we have. Yeah. yeah. Our job is to build up the kingdom and if he can keep us from that it says here on page 98 it says i'm start on 97 it says we see in daniel chapter 11 that the people violated the covenant and became corrupt with flattery flattery mm-hmm. will kill you oh. that's the last that yeah yep yeah, that's number five no. of the uh it, the devices of the devil Flattery. Oh, yeah. you so cute, girl. Yeah. Look at you, boo. Yeah. Look. Wait, wait, oh man, wait, you smell wait, so good. Wait. You handsome. You know where you've been, where you've been all my life. Where you uh, been? That part. I see yeah. the wreckage of my ways. Yeah. Just, but yes. but we've got a comment, a question. Um I know. And I'm I'm gonna I wanna get that. Oh, you got it. You put it up there. No, I didn't. Oh, okay. I was going to put that question up here, but I'm going to put it up there right after I finish this. It says, um, it says, um, in order to manipulate through flattery, one must violate the covenant agreement with God. Listen, one must be drawn away by the lust of their own heart. What's in your heart? What's in your heart that's going to draw you away? That part. It ain't got nothing to do with the other person. Mm-hmm. Like I just said, I was thirsty. Mm-hmm. But it didn't start right there. It started a little, a little, a few months prior. You know, because I had got, I was flattered. Somebody, you know what I'm saying? Somebody said something mm-hmm. and I was flattered by it. Like, mm-hmm. oh, we really me? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, can't be me. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> You know, <laughs> can I can I say something here? Yes. Rat poison is ninety percent healthy. Oh. It has corn. It has dried up potatoes. It has a little bit of peppers in it, but it's that ten percent strychnine that kills. Yes. And it comes along with the package. So the reason it's ninety percent is because they want the rat to keep eating. Yeah, and get Ooh, full, that's not good. knowing that's good. That he's eating ten percent strychnine later on is going to cause him to die. That's what flattery is. That's a exactly slow that's death. Good. A slow death. Yeah, slow yes. death. That's good. Here's that's our question. Good. Let me go to this question. <laughs> I like that. That that was real good. And as I stated, I was um thirsty. <laughs> I was thirsty. Is it that's the name of this topic, isn't it? Yeah. Is it love? Is it love? Just thirsty. Thirsty people hallucinate and see uh, mirage. I think is this the is this the question here? It was two. One the last one is can you explain self-obsession tied to toxic relationships? That one, yes, that's the one. I want to put that one up. I'm trying to find it. It's but, it's uh, about fifth from the bottom. I see it right here. There you go. So Latoya, Providence Latoya said, can you explain self-obsession tied to toxic relationships? You know, that can be, that can, there can be more than one reason. One can be being obsessed with fixing people, being obsessed with um, validating your own worth based on how this relationship turns out. Um, Obsessed with not wanting to to look like a failure at this relationship so i got to stay in it and make it right 
but it take two to tango. And if the other person is not working along with you to make the relationship healthy, you know, somebody, I, I saw a post today and it reminded me of, of, of something that I've said for years. And that is, if you buy a bag of white potatoes and there's one rotten one in there, that the, the good ones is 10 good ones, one rotten one. The 10 good ones not going to make the rotten one good. Right. The one rotten one is going to make the, the other oh, thing go bad. Yes. And, and so no matter how much you work on you and no matter how much you try to change you, mm -hmm. if the other person is not on board, their toxicity is going to have a greater impact, uh, infiltration into your spirit then all of you trying to change is going to have on theirs unless you put some boundaries. Now, I'm not necessarily talking about marriage because in the marriage covenant, there's there's a relationship with God in the midst. If God is in the midst of that, that's all another story. Yeah. But when I'm talking about dealing with toxic people, oftentimes you got to cut people off because they're they don't want to, they okay with being toxic. Mm -hmm. And you got to yeah. be okay with them being okay with being toxic. Mm -hmm. And know that your responsibility is to work on yourself. But that self-obsession, when we talk about addiction, you know, toxic relationships, another addiction. Is it love or are you just thirsty? When we talk about addiction, we talked about early on in part one of uh, uh, Free to Shine tonight. We talked about um, addiction is threefold. It's physical, mental, and spiritual. Mm -hmm. It is physical, mental, and spiritual. And, and so... The physical is the compulsion. The mental is the obsession. Mm -hmm. And so that mentality, <laughs> what's driving your mentality? What's causing you to be so focused on getting it right? Are you a perfectionist? Where'd that come from? Did it come from childhood? Mm -hmm. Was it a, a, was it something that was, was, was infiltrated into your life as a child that you got to do everything right and you got to succeed at everything? So now yeah. here, fast forward 40 years, you in a relationship and you got to, you got to make it come out. Uh, um, you got to come out of this smelling like a rose. Mm -hmm. You got to, you can't admit that it, that the relationship didn't work because you take it personal. Mm -hmm. because, so then you become obsessed with making it right. You know, mm -hmm. and that's just kind of one angle. Um, that's just kind of one angle to that. Wow. But you, oh, um, Keila said, you got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. That's right. <laughs> that's and the right. Holy Spirit will let you know this is not good for you. Mm -hmm. Know when to walk away and know when to run. I like that. Mm -hmm. I like that. That that was a uh, uh, a song. The gambler. I, yeah. The, gam the gambler. Kenny Rogers. Yes. yes. Kenny. <coughs> Kenny. Uh, was it? Rogers. 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 Kenny Rogers. Yeah. Yes. You got. You got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Sometimes you got to count your losses and that's get right. out and walk away <laughs> because you you know that's that other reason why people stay. I'm, I can remember staying for so long because it's like i don't put all this work into this relationship and then as soon as I, I bail on it he gonna get himself together and be that brother that i've been working on all these years <laughs> right. to make. so i got to stay so i can benefit yeah. from the work i put in you yeah. know and i have watched people do that mm -hmm. but you know and so there you go and you waste some more years of your life because mm -hmm. there's no there's no fruit for repentance mm -hmm. there's no fruit for repentance see you gotta mm -hmm. look at a person and see if they, they've given you lip service and saying they're going to get better and change or if they're really working on getting better getting and changing. Better and, change. and, and they can't change without leaning on God. He has designed us. You know, there's a chapter um, in the book where I talk about pride spoiling us, right? Mm -hmm. On page yeah. 15 in chapter 3. Um, yeah. Pride <laughs> pride will tell you ain't nothing wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that part. Yeah. You know, and, and, and so then we become open prey to the enemy because God res resists the proud. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible tells us that he gives grace to the humble. And, and so if we want to hide in the shadow of the almighty, you know, humility is a powerful war, uh, uh, is. warfare weapon. It is. But, but, it we, is. but, but unless we humble ourselves, we can't hide under the shadow of the almighty. We are exposed to the enemy. Mm -hmm. um, on page 52, Elder, it says humility is a powerful spiritual warfare weapon. Mm -hmm. It is used like camouflage is used in the army. 
Mm -hmm. All areas of the flesh that are not covered by the soldier's fatigues yes. must be covered with black mm -hmm. camouflage solution designed to conceal the heat of the flesh. Mm -hmm. The enemy has an infrared light. He has infrared lights on, on his firearm targeting the flesh so even in the night they can spot a human being by the heat. My God. Our flesh screams to reveal itself. When something happens that attaches itself to a stronghold, uh, what a resentment, a, re a rejection issue, abandonment issue, it attaches to that thing within us, particularly when we feel taunted or provoked by someone, especially the person you were in the relationship with. If you hadn't have been healed when you walked past that ex at the Eastern Market, uh, <laughs> Minister Aaron, you, that, that thing would have hit you in your pride. Mm probably would have messed up the rest of your day with your girl <laughs> you know and so it's because the enemy comes to take us captive at his will yeah. the, the scripture um that that i referred to for that i believe is second timothy where it talks about the devil actually taking us captive at his will yes when you got yes. something that belongs to him that's mm -hmm. why Jesus said the evil one is coming, but he ain't got nothing in me. Got nothing yeah, in yeah, me. What he right, got in yeah, you right. coming for what's he is. He coming yeah. to reel you in mm -hmm. because of what's in you that belongs he, to him. Look what he did to Jesus. He, yeah. uh, when Jesus was tempted, he took Jesus on the high. How did, how did he do that? You know, he had some, he wanted to destroy our salvation at the beginning. At the very and beginning. He, and if he can get Jesus to bow down and make stones bread. He, he could like eliminate all of our salvation, you know. But he got to tap time. into what's in. So he tapped into Jesus' hunger. Yep. Because yeah. He yeah. Eaten. He's he got to tap into something in Absolutely. you yeah. that's not submitted yeah. to God. Right. And right. so, yeah, submit your feelings and your actions to God. So, um, Elder Latoya, I, I hope that was helpful to you. Uh, she said, wow, I need another KPP session soon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> You know, because I'm telling you, this this walk is real, and we we cannot afford to be ignorant of the devil's devices because yes. he ain't taking no days off. You're right? No, mm. no. You know, as I as as what um, Minister Aaron and what you just said, you know, as far as the enemy trying to take us out. Listen, that is his sole purpose. Mm -hmm. That's his whole sole purpose. He ain't, he, he, you know, I was just telling somebody that he does it, you know, on, on your job, you get vacation days, you get comp days, you get sick days. He take no days off. <laughs> he doesn't. Listen, in, in Revelation chapter 12, when he, when the woman was pregnant with the baby, mm -hmm. get ready to give birth. Now, this is when he really tried to, to, to tear us all the way up for real. Mm -hmm. He tried to take the baby when he was tried to get Jesus when he was being born. Mm -hmm. Right. So Michael snatched Jesus from him, sent Jesus to the throne on the throne. So the devil mad now. So he went after the mama. Mm -hmm. When he couldn't get the mama, he tried to kill her. God allowed her to get wings as an eagle and fly into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. He couldn't get her. So now he angry. Mm -hmm. So he made a vow. His vow was, I can't get her. I'm going after her seed. Mm -hmm. We her seed. Mm -hmm. Anybody who wants to be a follower of Jesus Christ. If we say, we say that we love the Lord with all our hearts and we make that confession, Romans 10 and 9, mm -hmm. and we do that, it's on and popping for us. Mm -hmm. He ain't taking no time off. He ain't taking no sick days. He coming in sick with the flu, with coronavirus. He coming in with everything he got to get you because he know that you not going to come in though. You get a little sniffle. <clears throat> oh, I'm sick. I ain't coming in today. He know us. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. we, we, we're not going to do it. When it's time to pray, God said, get up and pray at three o'clock. 2.30 come, Lord. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, we're not doing it. Or it's time to pray and somebody gets sick in the house or chaos jump off in your house. Oh, I'm not praying. No, that's mm -hmm. when you pray. Yes. 
chaos jump off, you go right into prayer. No, nope, I got you. Mm-hmm. Because at that point, you confusing the devil because now he don't know what to do. Right. He don't right. know what to do. And so at <laughs> this point in our lives, that's why it says right here, humility is a powerful spiritual warfare weapon. I love this part as she just read and said. Mm-hmm. It, it is it is our warfare camouflage <laughs> for us. As yes. believers, we have to hold on to what the word of God says. It says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. James 4 and 7. Yes. It's just that simple. All ungodly feelings will pass. Just lean, lean on God. I remember, she said, I remember when he told me to lean on him because he got my back. Mm-hmm. Listen, yes. he told me to pull. He said, listen, you see, God will use your experiences. You know, I was a crack addict back in the day. He yeah. said, listen, pull on me like you pulled on that crack pipe. Oh. Pull and hold it. Pull and hold it. Y'all know some of y'all weed smokers. Pull and hold it. You're trying to get all you can get out of it. Pull on God and hold on. <laughs> that part. <laughs> that part. He told me, love me like you love those men. And I'll show you what I can do. And he's been taking very good care of me. Listen, yeah. as she stated, he will use whatever he knew that would get you. Mm-hmm. He knew that would get me. Yeah. I was a yeah. well-kept woman. Listen. Mm-hmm. And he keeps me well. Yeah, yeah. You understand? And yeah. so he uses that because he knows that's what we need. And he's a good father. Sometimes it says, number six on, on chapter 100, it says, separate yourself from people whose lifestyles are contrary to your new life. You got to walk away from... what the, what the, I'm going to put this thing back up here again with, um, with Miss Keela. Um, my, my cousin, Miss Keela, what she put up here. She put up here, she said, sometimes you just got to know when to hold them. You got to know when to hold them, when to fold them, when to walk away, and when to run. run. Yeah. You got to know. I, I want to share the screen. Can I share um, yes. from chapter five? You hit yes. you touched on that. Um <clears throat> where it, it talks about uh hold on um tips for safeguarding against the devil's devices mm-hmm. yes i don't know did i share my screen can y'all see it we no, can't see, I can't it. see it yeah let me see okay let me see it says it's it's, it's a screen share let me stop it i think i just i mean um wait no I saw, I thought I just saw it. Did it it flash up? It might have been delayed. Flashed out. Yeah. Do it again. It might take a minute to show up. Here it is. So, listen. Here we are. Neither, number one, don't give place to the devil. Don't set yourself up by putting confidence in your flesh because Mm -hmm. no good thing dwells in it. No yes. person thing dwells in it. Don't set yes. yourself up. Oh, I'm just going to go over here and show myself that I'm over this and that I'm strong now. Mm-hmm. You're going to end up walking away saying, what was I thinking? Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> Caught yep. up again. What happened? Pride. You got to read uh, about where pride will take you um, yes. a- as it's talked about in chapter three. Then number two, don't test yourself. Because you yeah. shall not tempt the Lord your God. That's what Jesus told the That's devil when he saying. told him to cast yourself down on these rocks and mm-hmm. let him save you. Don't go somewhere to see if God will keep you in that mess that he told you not to go back into. Because mm-hmm. he'll let you fall on your face to prove to show you it is better to honor him than gods of That's other right. lands. Mm-hmm. Uh, 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 and then number three. Uh, does what, what if, if only in just one more time sound familiar to you? Don't look back. Remember Lot's wife. Mm-hmm. Follow God's instructions. Yes. Follow God's instructions. Follow. Mm-hmm. And then tell yourself no to instant gratification. That's the hard part. And that's back to that oh, confession. Yes. I want what I want when I want it. I want to yes. feel good. Mm-hmm. Remember Esau and how he gave up his birthright to be instantly gratified. Mm-hmm. 
he cried and begged and could not get back what he had lost. Sometimes yes. you'll take a loss because of your hard headedness mm -hmm. and there ain't no restoring of it. Mm -hmm. Number five, be just as determined to do right as you were to do wrong. Crucifying your flesh is necessary. It hurts. But mm -hmm. when Jesus was on the cross and all that agony and all that pain and, and one part of the scriptures, it says they offered him vinegar mixed with gall. Y'all, that was opiate and wine. That was a painkiller. Yes. They offered it to him. The Bible says when he tasted thereof, he would not drink. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, the enemy going to offer you whatever he knows you'll, you'll, you yeah, might go you'll for, to take, for. Yes. to take the edge off. Mm -hmm. Chapter three, yeah. crucifixion is painful. Mm -hmm. But but understand that it might not be opiate it's and wine. Necessary. It might not be a drug. Yeah. It might be that man. It might be that woman. It might be a drink. But he'll offer you something to take the edge off. Mm -hmm. Don't go mm -hmm. for the buyout. Yeah. <laughs> Don't go for the buyout because right. you go, you gonna you going to uh, uh um mess around and give up your right. Jesus, yep. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you gotta mm -hmm. crucify your flesh. But it's it see, it's one thing to have perpetual pain when you in your mess and in pain. And there's mm -hmm. no end in sight. Yeah. But when you come out, you experience the pain of withdrawal. You experience the pain of change. You experience the longing. Don't look back like Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. because this is productive pain. Mm -hmm. And if you keep on keeping on and keep going forward and keep following God, you will come out on the other side of that pain mm -hmm. better than you was going in. Yeah. And so you got to stick to it. And then number six, separate yourself. Elder Michelle, you touched on this one. Separate yourself from people whose lifestyles are contrary to your new life. The Lord has said, leave them, separate leave yourself them. from them. Don't touch their filthy things and I will welcome you. Second mm -hmm. Corinthians 6 and 17. People of God, is you know, we touched on some things throughout the book, but ain't nothing like reading it and going through it and taking yeah. your time yeah. and yeah. diving into it for yourself. Yes. Yeah. You got to get the book. When I say you got to get the book, you have to get the book mm -hmm. because Elder, I mean, Pro, uh, Prophet Satoya says productive pain like having a baby. It is. But mm -hmm. you got to get this book so that you will be able to get free so that you can be free from whatever it is that's holding you bound whatever it is mm -hmm. and and as apostle stated earlier your toxic relationship don't necessarily have to be with an individual you know you can be in a toxic relationship with uh with yourself <laughs> you could be in a toxic relationship just with, with 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 just fighting your inner person because you refuse to deal with the past of the pain the pain mm -hmm. of the yeah. Mm -hmm. You refuse to deal with that. It's time to deal with that stuff. Mm -hmm. If you can't get honest, you can't get free. Can't mm -hmm. get honest, you can't get free. That's my and motto. If yeah. And if you can't get free, then you cannot and you will not, you will not do and accomplish what it is that God has for you to accomplish on his earth. Mm -hmm. He he told Jeremiah, I knew you. Before mm -hmm. I even placed you in your mother's womb. Yeah. 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 So for me, what that means is that he knew each and every one of us mm -hmm. before he placed us in our mama's womb. Yes. He, he did. knew who we were. Mm -hmm. He knew what we would do. He knew we'd be on this on this podcast free. He knew we'd be on free to shine today talking about toxic relationships. Mm -hmm. Is it love? Are you just thirsty? It's mm -hmm. time. And as he stated, he told the woman at the well, if you knew who really was asking you, if you knew water, mm -hmm. you would ask me for a drink and you would thirst no more. She mm -hmm. says, Well, you know what? I want that water. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. Yeah. That's what I want. I used to be thirsty, but I got a drink of that water. Yeah. Once you get a drink of that water, you won't thirst no more. Yeah. I really appreciate each and every one of you for coming on and being with me. I appreciate all of the listening audience, everybody who came, God sent Abraham until to till the ground which he had taken. Yes, from which he had taken. That's what he did. 
He told, that's what he wants us to do. That's right, Prophetess Latoya. But I thank y'all for coming. I appreciate the time that y'all put in. I know it was a little longer than normal, but listen, it was worth it. Because this, I had enough guests on here. This here was worth it. I believe that it was worth it. And as, as my cousin so just so graciously stated, you got to know when to hold them. Hold oh, them when to walk away and when to just run. Mm -hmm. Listen, and when the people, you gotta know when to run. Mm -hmm. Nah, you can't be yeah. just looking at you. I, oh, I got to get up out of here. It's time to go. You gotta know when it's time to go. I thank y'all for coming, and it's time to go. I have been mm -hmm. free to shine. I thank you for joining me. We will do this again, again. Thank you, everyone. See you later next time. That's right. Toxic relationships. Is it love or are you just thirsty? Amen.